Hey, I'm Joshua Hamlin. Um, I use a lot of cordage in my videos. Um, I got some videos that show how to make it in an elemental way, like the squirrel snare video, um, the yucca video. But I want to go into some uh, complexities of it, just describe it more fully so that everyone understands it. Um, cordage is so important. It's completely necessary for, for living in the wilderness. Um, you don't have nails, so cordage holds your structure up if you're building a wiki up or a teepee or, you know, cordage holds your thatching on, your grass thatching and things like that. So it's a necessary thing. Um, it's in the top five of important. You got fire, food, water, cordage, containers, things like that um, that are really important and necessary for living. So I'm going to do a video on cordage. Um, there's different types of cordage. There's animal cordage, sinew. This is backstrap sinew. Um, of course, it's not cordage right now. It's just sinew. But you can turn this into incredible cordage, make bow strings out of it for your bows, things like that. Um, it, it separates into these fine fibers here. And you can make cordage out of that and stuff. And it has its own glue. Animal fibers have its own glue, so um, knot tying is a lot less necessary with animal fibers. And then you got your plant fibers. This is yucca. I cut down a couple hours ago, right over here. Um, yucca is very strong cordage. It's comparable to hemp. Um, it's incredibly strong. There's a million things you can make cordage out of. You can make it out of the inner bark of trees, uh, maple trees, willow trees make great cordage. Elm makes one of the best cordages. Um, you can make it out of specific plants where the bark is on the outside of them, plants like milkweed or nettle, stinging nettle. Um, I got videos on those plants too, so check them out. You can make it out of plants where it's in the core or plants where it's in the leaves. In yucca, the fibers are inside of the leaves. Um, this ain't a video on processing fibers, but I will show you how, you how to process yucca. It's pretty easy. See these strings? There's a million of them in here. You just split it. Um, if you want to make really good cordage, you want to get rid of all this green stuff because it's not fiber. It's waxy. Um, but for quick cordage, you can just split it like this with your hands. Pull these strings out. And I've done that already. This is two leaves, two yucca leaves right here worth of fiber. And this is what I'm going to use to show you how to do cordage. Okay, the first step is selecting a little bundle here. The thinner you make your cordage, the longer it takes. So if you're making rope that's an inch thick, you can make 50 foot of it pretty quick if you've processed the material. Um, for thick cordage, the processing is what takes the time. For thin cordage, it's actually the cording that takes the time. Um, if you're making fish and string and you're making 50 foot of it, be prepared for lots of hours of work bowstrings the same way you, you prepare for and especially with bowstrings because you want no flaws you want the string to be completely strong so we'll pretend like we're making a bowstring here take a bundle start like this and I'm going to show you this from a different angle okay this is from my view this will be less confusing this way okay you got a bundle your first step is to twist them away from you. Twist with one hand away from you and hold the other hand steady. Keep twisting until you get a kink. Like that right there. Oh. See the kink? With this, the kink you're going to pinch with your left hand if you're right handed. And you're going to, now you have a top bundle and a bottom bundle. It's one bundle but it's now separated into two sections. You take the top bundle and you twist it away from you. Now the fingering is kind of difficult, kind of like when you're a teenage boy with a girl, um, but with a little practice it gets easy. So you twist the top one away from you with these three fingers, you reach behind, grab the bottom bundle and twist up towards you. 
you're going to reposition your pinch every time you do this and you're going to do this a million times so now you have a new top bundle this was the top bundle a second ago now this is the top bundle you take it you twist it away from you you reach behind with these three fingers and twist up towards you now you got your original top bundle is on top again this one's on the bottom now twist away from you reach behind grab twist up towards you move your pinch twist away from you reach behind twist up towards you, move your pinch. Now it kind of feels weird on your fingers at first, but once you get it down, you can go pretty fast. What we're doing here is a reverse twist. Um, it holds tension against itself. If you let go, it doesn't come loose because the tension of these strings is going one direction while the tension of them twisted together is going another direction. So it's tension against itself. It holds together. That's how all rope is made nowadays. Well, for all time, not just nowadays, but forever, that's how rope was made. Twist, twist. You can get going pretty fast, but there are shortcuts. And we'll show you those here in a second. But first I want to show you how to add. Okay, it's starting to get thin here. This, this bundle's thinner than this bundle. So we're going to grab another bundle here, take a couple strings, lay it right across them like this, with half of it in here and half of it in here. Or you can do it, let's see, pull this out real quick. Or you can just lay a little bit of it across one side and then most of it across the other, like so. So now we have long section here and a short section here. Then you just go back into your twisting. Boom. And, it, and it's moved right in there. Seamlessly, hopefully. It's important that you know how to do this the slow way because this is the strongest method. Um, the shortcuts will make good cordage, but it won't be near as strong. And every time you come to the ends while you're doing the shortcut, you have to convert back to this method until you get it in there. So, now we'll show you the shortcuts. Well, let me add another bundle real quick to this side so it's longer as well. Just going to lay it across, like so. Twist it in. Alright, now we'll do the shortcuts. One more important thing when you're making cordage is you kind of want it to be wet. It's easier to work with. It stiffens as it dries. So there's some snow right here. It's winter time. Um, I'm just going to get this wet because it's drying out. Alright, for the shortcut, what we're going to do is the leg roll. This is called the leg roll. Pinch that there. Lay it across your leg like this and then roll. It's hard to do with jeans on. It's really a lot better to do on your bare skin. Roll them both together like this. Put your thumb in there and then ah, that's not working very well. Let's try it again. Okay. Put your thumb in there and then roll this this way. Then you do it again. Boom. Put your thumb in there and roll this way. This is a lot uh, less tight than the other method. And I'll show you what I mean. Okay. See how tight this is? This is not near as tight. So, for using a bowstring or something like that where you need a lot of strength, don't do the leg roll. Just do it the slow way. And then there's another shortcut that I use a lot, and I like this one because you can do it while you're walking. I just take one of the top string, twist it away from me, grab it in my teeth, then I take the bottom string, twist it away from me, then I twist this together like that. 
again. And it makes pretty good, pretty good tight cordage. Still not as tight as this method though. It is tighter than the leg roll method. And I go back and forth between them. Each time that you double a cord like this, you're making it eight times stronger. So, this is eight times stronger than a bundle that's just twisted, like this. This makes strong cordage, but not near as strong as a doubled cordage. This twisted like this is eight times stronger than this untwisted. You can double this again, and that's what we're going to do here in a few minutes, once I get this long enough, and make it eight times stronger again, which will be, this is probably too strong for me to break with my hands. I'm not going to try, because if I succeed, then i got to start all over. But once I double it over, it for sure will not be strong. I won't be able to break it. And I'm a giant. I'm a, I'm a beast. Um, can't tell that from the videos, but I'm just a monster. Six foot five, 300 pounds. If I can't break it, then probably nobody can. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to twist this up quite a bit longer, and that's going to take a little time. So we'll do that off camera. We don't want to take up too much space. And then once I got it long enough to double over, we'll come back and show you how to, to uh, double it again. You have to go the opposite direction when you're doubling it again. That's why I have to show you. So I'll be back in a few minutes. Thanks. Okay, I'm nearing the end of my, of my two leaves here. This is two leaves worth of yucca, made this much cordage. Um, what I'm going to do at the end here is just tie it off. Super simple. Just going to make a loop, pull this in through it. See, it's really strong cordage. All right. Now, to double it, now, notice first off that we got all these little stragglies. So I'll show you how to get rid of those in a second. But first, we're going to double this. Remember, this will be, make it eight times stronger than it is right now. Right now, it's very strong. Doubling it over will make it eight times stronger, which is already eight times stronger than if it was a single twisted one, which is already eight times stronger than if it was just single fibers without being twisted. So, what we got to do... What we got to do is the exact same thing, except backwards. So, what we're going to do, instead of, instead of twisting away from us on the strings, like we were doing before, we're going to twist towards us. I'm going to make this even, because I'm not adding any more to it after this. So twist it till it kinks, like that. Pinch the kink, and then twist the top string towards us, and reach in front of us, and pull the bottom string up in front of us instead of behind like before. Um, I'm going to show you this from my viewpoint here in a second. Okay, from my viewpoint, I'm taking the top string, I'm, remember I'm pinching here, I'm twisting the top string towards me, then reaching in front and pulling this up in front. Like so. It's, it's even more trickier with the fingering. But we can do the shortcut easier once we have cordage. Remember before I was rolling away from me, this time I'm going to roll towards me. Put my finger in there. You put your finger in there so that it doesn't do too much at once. Roll towards me. Twist. It's as simple as that. Of course, you can do the, the bite it method too. Twist towards. Like so. You can do several inches at once doing that method. That's why 
I like it and you can do it when you're walking like I said. Not a lot of sit down time when you're trying to live in the wilderness. So you can just go back and forth between methods. Now that I'm at the end, I'll just tie it off. Make a loop, put the end through the loop. Of course, I didn't make a very long one here um, because this is just for demonstration. This is strong. There's no way. There's no way I could break this. <sighs> Especially not in my advanced age state. That's a strong piece of cordage. Notice that I have a loop here at this end where I started. If I wanted to make a necklace or a bracelet or whatever, I could just take the knot that I just made, stick it through the loop. I got a survival necklace or bracelet or something like that. Now, we still got all these dangly hair sticking off of it, which is not real nice looking. I'll show you how to do that with modern fire. Just take your lighter or campfire and just go along burn off all these hairs. kind of windy. As long as the fire don't get in too deep to your rope it won't burn just the stuff on the outside will Speaking of lighters, people ask me, what is the most important fire starting equipment that you can carry into the woods in the case of an emergency? Should it be a ferrule rod or flint and steel? My answer is always a lighter, because they're a dollar. Um, they don't always work, they sometimes fail, so it's good to have an alternative method. It's some, it's good to have First off, I recommend everyone knows how to do a bow drill and knows how to do it in every situation, wet situations, snow, um, it could save your life. If, you, if your lighter gets wet, it won't light. Um, so know how to do the bow drill. Practice it until you can get it in the middle of a rainstorm. Maybe one of these days I'll do a demo where I soak my whole kit in a bucket of water and then get a fire out of it. I think that would be a pretty cool one. Okay, anyway, I burned off a lot of the strings. Um, Strong, strong piece of cordage. Unbreakable. By human strength, anyway. I wouldn't go jumping off a building with one like this, but you could double it again and definitely make a rock climbing rope, you know. Um, that's how you do it. That's how you make cordage. There are other methods that you can braid, um, but braids make flat. Uh, braided cordage is flat cordage. You've seen my, if you've seen my um, finger weaving video, that's a flat braid. It's a big flat braid but it's a braid. Um, when you're braiding with three strands, you're still making a flat braid. It's just smaller, but it's still flat, which causes problems if you're, you know, for instance, for a bowstring. A flat braid would not be good for a bowstring because it would twist and the flat section would be uneven. 
Um, it just wouldn't be good. What you want is something that's rounded. This is a round weave. This is what all the rope you get nowadays. You can also do more than two strands. You could do three strands at a time. If you're leg rolling, you can lay down three strands on your leg and roll them all together and make three stranded cordage, which is pretty tough. And then double that over and it would be six stranded. Right now this is eight, eight um, ply. Is that right? Uh, don't get me doing math. Um, this might be four ply. I don't know. It's one of those, but it's really strong. Um, that's it. Thanks for watching. Um, I'm going to be doing pretty soon a video on making a sling out of natural cordage. So I wanted to get the basics down first. Um, to make a sling you need lots of small strands of, of cordage. Um, my buddy and me are both doing videos and we're going to compare our videos uh, for our different styles of slings and see how they relate. So I can't watch his video and he can't watch mine until we both have them uploaded. And then we'll, we'll see, and we'll learn from each other. That's how we do it. We learn from each other. Thanks for watching, um, and keep on watching. Subscribe, comment. Uh, I love that stuff, and I love to see pictures of your finished products. So please, send me, send me pictures. My email is joshuahamlin at yahoo. Um, thanks for watching.